you can't do whatever you want and be successful. I keep hearing this sentiment echoed that, um, you know, it's never too late for anybody to become whatever they want to be and you can do whatever you want and that you should always just follow your dreams. And I'm just here to say that that is not always completely accurate. Basically, we shouldn't be telling children that they can do whatever they want and still be successful. I've been seeing this uh, sentiment shared a lot, specifically in the dating space as of lately, um, through, I'm sure, you know, everybody watches the Kevin Samuels videos nowadays and things like that. Um, and then, you know, the Lapeef talk show. And one thing that's something that keeps getting brought up, it's a recurring theme, is people saying that they're not going to settle or that they're not going to change who they are to, and that they believe that they should get exactly what they want. And I just don't know where most people got this mentality from. I don't understand how people believe that because we've never had any evidence to actually physically show that. But at the same time, somewhere along the way, this term got conjured up and now people run with it because it's such a sweet sentiment. It's cool to believe that you can do whatever you want and then become whoever you want to be afterwards. It's cool to, to think that you can do things without any type of consequence and that you're not going to be messing up your future opportunities. But that's not the case. The truth of the matter is every step that we take every single day is going to have a minor to a major effect on what we can do the next day on so on and so forth. And as we go through life, some of those choices that we made a long time ago build up into something that's much bigger that we didn't expect um, later down the line. I'm definitely guilty of that myself. So I say all that to say, I know a lot of people, I feel like, say these kind of things to make themselves feel better about the life choices that they've made and the circumstances that they're in. But one thing that I think that we need to pay attention to is what that teaches the next generation. Because that's why we've gotten to where we are as a society, where people make these extreme irresponsible choices and why we're so money hungry and, and materialistic and, 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 you know, only want for self. I believe that that's because we've been fed a lot about what our dream our dreams are supposed to be individually. And somewhere along the way, that's gotten misinterpreted as to where you don't have to pay attention to a common goal. We've totally lost our sense of community because of the focus on independence. And it's not just in relationships because this isn't just a, this isn't just a man and woman thing. This is exemplified on both sides. But we can even go economically and talk about all of the things that are happening in the space of cryptocurrencies and investments where we're seeing all of this momentum trading and we're seeing people trading based off of um, meme stocks and things like that without any type of intrinsic value. And there are people who are caught up in these waves who are actually believing that this is changing the systems of economics for the future, when in reality, they're just participating in turning the stock market and the cryptocurrency market into casinos. They believe that this can continue on and that the money's gonna continue to generate itself. But the truth of the matter is that money is not coming from anywhere besides other people's pockets. You know, if things don't have an intrinsic value to them, then you're not going to end up getting anything for it at the end once all the uh, sensationalism dies down. But here you have it, wrapping it back to the theme, here you have it that a lot of people are sitting here saying, no, this is the future, this is the way that it's going to be. I don't care what you say. I, I, told, I talked to a lot of people on my social media when I saw the uh, specifically the Dogecoin craze that came up. And, you know, I've seen some dudes make their money. I'm not mad at that. But there were some people who were really believing that this was worth something, and it's not. And the fact that they believed that, the fact that people believed that 
it was worth like the the money the cost of it they thought that the price of it meant that it was valuable but it's not because it doesn't have anything to its core and that sentiment the belief without understanding the fundamentals of investing and understanding the fundamentals of assets exemplified the same thing that people in relationships who believe that they can do be come however they are and then still get what they want. I feel like that's the same attitude. Now, young people need something better to look up to because honestly, we see mental health, we see economics, we see the situations that we're in individually getting progressively worse. And that's making the mentality a lot more defensive because people are having to so people are on their own, they're isolated, they're independent, they're going through things, but they're also struggling because they're by themselves. But they're also feeling like that's what they're supposed to be is by themselves. So they're not going to show us that they're struggling because they want us to believe that things are going better for them than they are, which is furthering their struggle because they're alone. Now, we have to be a little bit more humble in the way that we're coming into life and our lessons that we're doing. Um, not everybody is going to be an entrepreneur. Some people are going to have to work in the corporate field and they will have to have a certain mentality to them that's going to have a little bit of conformity involved. And that's okay, because I just, I just want to let you know that when I was a teenager, I used to have a huge problem with conformity. And that was why I didn't, I didn't want to participate in that. So I didn't really care about money or anything like that. I thought that my appearance and what I was into and how I wanted to behave was the most important thing in my life. But as I got, as I got older, and I went through some uh, stressful situations by myself and realized that a lot of the things that I was into because it was fun or it was cool or it was just what we were doing at the time, a lot of those things didn't actually hold up or mean anything in the future. And what did matter was where I was at financially and what I was doing to make myself get ahead in life. And I realized that there was a lot of years where I could have been focusing on that that I wasn't necessarily worried about it. And that has set me back thus far to this day. I've been able to get myself to a relatively decent position financially, which is something that I'm very happy about. But given the opportunity to go back and, and do things a little differently with the same knowledge, I would have. And now I don't sit here and, and kick myself like that because I don't believe that people should um, worry about things that they can't change. But the way that I use that information is like right now by telling the next person who may be coming up underneath of me going through similar circumstances or even if you're not going through similar circumstances, there's objective principle to what I'm saying when I say that you have to set yourself up for success and then worry about the extra things that you want to do with your life. Don't try and go and have the fun before doing the work because the work is what's going to permit you to have the fun. Um, and like, like I said just then, just because I got to, just because I got to a space where I am comfortable enough to go back and talk about the turmoil and trials and tribulations that I went through doesn't mean that I would say, I wouldn't sit here and say, well, look how I turned out. I would, yeah, I would totally tell somebody to go through the same things that I went through. No, there was nights where I did not think that it was going to end up like this to be very completely candid. There was nights that I didn't even want to continue, but I did. And now it feels much better, but I know that if I had had a mentality that was more aligned with how I am now back then, that who knows where I would be. Once again, I don't kick myself about that, but I'm always, whenever I see a young person 
and I have the opportunity to tell them to just spend a little bit more time planning for their future, that is when I go ahead and reach out and I make that I make that effort to at least get that point across. And if they decide that that's not something that, you know, they're in tune with, that's on them. But I will sit here and have this argument all day with people that you cannot do whatever you want and expect to get whatever you want. A little bit of conformity is okay. And there's a reason that I'm dressed like this right now, because I mean, this is, you know, I made this vest myself, actually. So, you know, I think it's cool. But at the same time, you wouldn't see me dressed like this at my regular job. I wouldn't have the job that I do if I dressed like this when I went to the interview. That's the point. I had to wear a button up and some slacks. I had to wear a suit and a tie for my interview. And you know what? I felt nice in my suit and tie because I know that these clothes don't define who I am. See, I think that with our society, we have went too deep into defining ourselves by our style that we're into or genres of music and things like that. When the truth is that the average person is much more nuanced than that. That's why we listen to wide ranges of music. And people sit here and think that that makes them so crazy and unique that they don't just assign themselves to one archetype. But the truth is that most of us don't assign ourselves to one archetype until we feel like we need to and we're afraid that we won't fit in if we don't. So, I say all that to say, true uniquity comes when you can conform, put on the uniform, but you still know who you are underneath of that. And I'm not talking about compromising core beliefs or anything like that here. Um, there are definitely jobs that I wouldn't take even if it meant I had to live a lower quality of existence. And this isn't all just about occupation, as you know, because I started talking about relationships. I'm trying to tie this all into the notion that you cannot do whatever you want and be successful. My whole point is whatever lifestyle that you want, find a path that gets pe the average person there, the average person there, and then follow that. Don't follow some special one-off, um, you know, like people who want to be rappers. People who want to be rappers are always looking at the one dude who got some crazy big break, came out of nowhere, blew up overnight. Now he's the hottest thing in the world. People always say, wow, you know, what if I got that opportunity? If I got that opportunity, that would be so amazing. But those people fizzle out just as fast as they do. Um, those people end up getting into altercations where they lose their freedom, they lose their money, they'll lose their mind, they'll lose their life, RIP to low loaded. I mean, we have those situations that happen every single day. Then you have the other hand, the people who are making the exact art that they want to. They're going slow and steady. They're building real genuine fan bases that will support them no matter, I mean, not no matter what they do, but will support them not just because they're hot for the moment, but because they actually genuinely fuck with what they make. Mm, pardon my language. But they're there to support them. And they must. They might have a tenth of the percentage of what a giant um, artist would have. But the long-standing relationship that they have and the support, not to mention the contractual obligations and the splits of the money on the other end, is going to make it so that that person who has the steadier longer career is probably going to make more money and have a better quality life than the person who blew up and fizzled out real fast you know it's like when you burn that bright you burn too fast you want to you want to make it a slow and steady thing we're all here in a rush to be our ultra selves and we want to bask in that become this is the day that I finally become the complete version of myself but the truth is that a lot of life is about becoming the next level of you all the way until the end most of being is becoming so we have to keep that mentality about us and we have to understand that there's no start or stop to this journey it's all about constant improvement 
So there's no room for you to sit here and say, I have reached my level and now it is up for somebody else to match what I believe that I deserve. You always have to be a little bit more pragmatic than that. Actually keep your eyes on what is going on around you so that you can absorb, like read the room. Sometimes it's not nice to find out that people don't think very highly of you, but that's also super important into your self-development because you're either going to decide that one, it doesn't matter why they don't like you and move on to another group of people who align with your beliefs, or you're going to realize that the reason that they don't like you is probably an actual character flaw that you should work on in yourself and develop it and make yourself better. Either way, one thing I know about criticism is that the mean-spirited critics thrive off of people who negatively respond to the criticism more than they do to the people who actually take it and hear it <clears throat> and move on. It's all about the energy that you devote. But anyways, I can make this video an hour long and I'm really trying to keep this short and sweet. But I did want to let you know that for the most part, we aren't special. Like human beings are very amazing and we are unique but we're not special. And what I mean is that we all want what we want, which are generally the same things, success, money, travel, love, family, freedom, all of these things. There's a very, there's a there's extremely broad way to approach getting them, meaning that your occupation could be many things. But one thing that you can't do is nothing and expect to achieve these things or you can't do less than the next man and expect to receive the same thing or resent them for what they have. So, yeah, wrapping all this up, once again, I just urge you that if you have the opportunity to speak to a young person and they seem to come off with the attitude of, I'm doing what I want and I'm still going to be successful, just kind of get in their ear and let them know that you should maybe link up with a mentor that's in the field that you want to pursue and kind of see how they've gotten their life structured so that it helps them succeed in that realm and then follow a actually structured path because waking up and telling yourself what you're going to do and what you're going to become is just the first step. And then a lot of planning and a lot of work comes after that. And that's the only thing that's going to get us to success. So, Thank you. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. I'm going to be coming with more um, videos talking about different subjects like this, just about life as I go through different things that I think of and hear and just share my thoughts and opinion. If you have any anything to contribute, please comment down below. And thank you so much. Have a good day.